Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Steve Dan and um, this is my guitar. Thanks for all of those who um, listened, um, watched and um, interacted with the video last week. Um, really, really appreciate all of the new subscribers. So hi. Um, and uh, and all the comments and also a uh, big welcome to Manfred on the Patreon page. Um, thanks for your support, mate. This really, really means a lot. Um, that last week we were looking at the, the head of Midnight Blue by Kenny Burrell. Um, we unpacked that a little bit, looked at some, um, some nice ways of uh, internalizing the chords and looking at some of the theory behind how he came up with it. Um, we looked at Van Morrison, weirdly, for a little bit. Um, and then we also um, tackled that 251, uh, the minor 251, um, and some of the uh, chord melody stuff in the B section. Um, this week we are looking at the, the first chorus of his solo. Um, so it's 16 bars. Um, that we've, we've got some blues vocabulary coming up. Um, we're looking at call and response um, in your soloing. Um, we tackle the two five, the minor two five one, um, and we look at some outside playing as well, um, and then also some bits and pieces on the mixolydian scale as well. Um, as I said um, last time, this is a really good, if you're a blues player, this is a really good tune to um, get started on if you want to dip your toe into the jazz world um, and learn some jazz vocabulary because it's not too intense. Um, it is mostly based on blues stuff. Um, but there is some uh, jazz vocabulary to be learnt in there, so it's a good way of um, kind of getting yourself into that um, into that that world um, without going too deep straight away. So, um, as always, if you really like the video, then please like and subscribe. And then, if you really like it, then Patreon is the place to go if you want to support me in making these videos and making some more. Um, that's uh, www.patreon.com forward slash X to guitar lessons. There should be a little link coming on the screen right now. Um, or you can click the link um, in the show notes below. Um, so without further ado, let's get into the A section and take a look at what Kenny does. So this A section here is full of blues vocabulary. Um, it's structured in a kind of call and response, um, antecedent and uh, consequent, um, as it's kind of called in music. Essentially, you've got a little line and then, which is like a question, and then he'll answer it. And the way that he's answering it each time is with chords. There's four licks and then four responses with the chords. Um, and he does respond ever so slightly different um, with the chords each time. Um, it's a really useful skill to be able to accompany yourself, which is what Kenny is doing in this particular instance. Um, when he's doing the, uh, when he's doing that stuff, he's accompanying himself. So he's playing his little lick, or whatever it is he's playing, and then he's accompanying himself with the chords. Now, on the backing track, we've got the organ playing, um, but on the original version, there's no organ. It's just bass, drums, and guitar. Um, and that's really difficult um, to be able to navigate um, when you're soloing that particular ensemble. I think it was um, John Schofield and Pat Metheny that were both saying in an interview that um, it was like one of the, um, the highest art forms in, in jazz to play as a trio, um, purely because it's so difficult and, and you've got to be able to play so melodically in order to be able to, to fully describe the, melod the harmony that's going on underneath. Um, so you've got to be really intentional um, about what you're playing. Um, so it's a really, it's, it would be a good idea for you to play maybe um, without the band first and see whether you can hear the, the chords going by by what you're playing. So we'll get, we'll get to that in the second section. Um, in the first section, the A section, um, it's mostly the, the harmonic center is mostly F minor. So we can relax a little bit because we haven't got too many chords going by really. So let's go through it lick by lick and see what he does. So here's the first lick. One, two, three, four, one. There's a slight bit of string bending in here. This is all just a minor pentatonic vocabulary, by the way. So it's, it's in this kind of position that he's playing it. 
and it's yeah purely uh, minor pentatonic and he's got like a little string bend here well at least i can hear it in the recording it's like an ever so slight blues curl um and i think that this shows kenny's um how he's picking up through osmosis i mean that you know the the old adage is that you know you are what you eat and I believe that, you know, with musicians, you are kind of what you listen to. And I think, you know, in the early 60s, you know, you had a lot of stuff, you know, you had things like B.B. King coming in um, and, you know, Eddie Eddie Cochran was playing and also Scotty Moore, who played for Elvis Presley. Um, and you had um, obviously the Beatles as well kind of coming in around that kind of time. And all of these um, musicians, um, Kenny would have been listening to as well as when he was playing on, on Broadway with um, as, as a pit player, which he did before. Um, he made this album for Blue Note. Um, he did hundreds, uh, maybe even thousands of, of shows. Um, just look at any of his interviews and you'll um, you'll hear about those stories. Um, and he would have had to have played lots and lots of different types of music. And I think that blues curl thing, which isn't you don't normally hear in jazz, um, I think Charlie Christian might have used it a little bit, um, but you don't normally hear it in jazz around that kind of time on guitar. I think he's picking up via osmosis from other types of music around that kind of time. So the kind of rock and roll and the pop kind of era and, and, and other blues and things. So I think he's bringing that in um, from outside. And I think that's really cool. So it's just a testament to uh, the fact that, you know, you should be listening to lots and lots of different type of music. Don't just polarize to, to jazz. That's that first lick. Um, after that, he plays his little answer phrase, which is, um, now this is super groovy. It's really syncopated. I think that's the he doesn't play it like that again and I think that's really really cool like how he plays it there um, and it's it's kind of like it's just kind of like preceding the kind of like the funk era I think it sounds really funky and it kind of just is is like a almost like a call forward call forward call back I don't know call forward probably um, of the kind of funk era and what Grant Green kind of moved into um, it, later in the 60s and then obviously what we heard later in the 60s were like Sly and Family Stone and stuff. So it's it, I, th I think that, you know, you can hear this kind of gradual pro progression in music, which is really cool. Um, so that's um, that's the first part. Oh, I should say that he the way that he's playing these chords is um, with hybrid picking. So I'm using my plectrum to pick the fourth string and my um, middle finger and annular finger, which is your ring finger, to play the third and second strings and it gives it's just it's less kind of harsh than just using a pick so try that here's the second lick one two three four one so this second lick is just purely blues and you can hear it as you know very similar to that It's almost like a, an answer to that phrase, isn't it, really? Um, it's kind of like he's got a micro and then a macro um, question and answer thing going on, which is pretty cool. But that's blue scale. So make sure you know that one. Okay. Um, but that's what he's doing there. And then he changes that same chords, G minor and A flat, but he changes the, um, uh, the rhythm of it. Uh, so it's not quite as funky as the first one, but still syncopated. So um, here's the third lick. One, two, three, four, one. So this one is, um, he jumps all the way at the neck. And we've got another blues curl thing going on there. I don't think it's quite as severe as what I just did or what I do in the demo. I just quite like it. But um, it is it is a little bit of a blues curl that he's got going on there. And he, he's up into this section of the uh, minor pentatonic. And so he's, he's in these, these kind of areas here. So make sure you know those areas of the minor pentatonic as well. Um, I don't generally use the kind of caged positions, um, but you could kind of see it from that point of view. And, and then the other one that he plays down here. And you could see that he's kind of using that, but um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the, the caged kind of system ruling, um, just because I think it for forces you to play in, in boxes. Um, but if, you know, if you're starting out, it, it might be a nice way to kind of understand the fretboard and digest the fretboard. Um, 
so he does the same thing again with the answer. So. Such a nice phrase, that one. Um, here's lick four. One, two, three, four, one. So this, this is quite quick. This is classic kind of Kenny Burrell. He uses this in Chitlin's Con Khan as well, these kind of fast little pentatonic rundowns. Um, and he changes the, uh, the accompaniment at the end again, so. Um, and that again, it's just really funky, really syncopated. Really, really like that bit that he does there. So, um, so that's the whole first A section, mostly kind of pentatonic and blues scale down this end of the neck and up here as well. So he's got full grasp of that. So just make sure that you're learning that stuff as well. If you really want to be able to kind of, you know, play something which is, um, you know, drawing on the inspiration of Kenny's playing. Um, and then, yeah, just try making sure that you've got those um, uh, call and response, the responses with your accompaniment. Cool, let's move on to the B section. The B section, this is where the whole kind of approach to tr the trio format comes into its own. It's, it's much more crucial here that you um, try and outline the, the harmony that's going on un underneath. So that will be the chords going on underneath. So make sure that you're knowing, uh, that you know the chord tones um, and that you're describing them within your melody in your solo. So the first thing to mention is that the chord progression is slightly different um, and also the feel is slightly different than the, the head. Um, when you're in the head, you've got that um, three, four, two, three, four. Um, here, the bass player is, is kind of, you can hear the accents and it's kind of like two, three, four, two, three, four, and he stays on F minor and then he goes to B flat seven and stays on B flat seven and then we go up to D flat and then down to C altered. So we've still got that eight bar format for the B, um, B section, but the chords are slightly different and um, you, I, I deciphered that by listening to the bass player. I could hear the bass player playing that B flat and also the D. Um, and I think I heard the A flat as well. And so I was like, okay, right. He's on B flat seven here. Um, and then I heard him play D flat instead of going to the, the rundown from the A flat minor nine to the B flat minor nine. I couldn't hear that anywhere, but I did hear this movement from uh, D flat seven to C seven altered. Um, or C altered. So that's the first thing to think about is in terms of how you're approaching it. It's slightly simplified. If we put it into two halves, that first half is the minor two, five, one, the G minor seven flat five, uh, C altered, F minor. One, two, three, four, one. So over the top of this section here, he's playing um, a natural minor um, over the top of the G minor seven flat five. Um, so that could be something that you use over the top of that first chord there, if you're trying to work out how to play over a minor two, five, one. Um, and it's really clever the way he comes down because he comes down the, the scale and he hits the third, the, the third of C right right on beat one. So it's really clever how he comes down because he comes down the scale and hits the E, which is the third of C, C uh, seven or C altered that he's using on beat one. So it's it's really, it's a, a, a stark change from the G minor seven flat five to the C seven. He's really describing that chord change. And that's something that we can learn from this as well when we're trying to navigate over it. You know, try and change 
um, onto a chord tone of the next chord so that you can fully describe the harmony that's going on underneath. And the other thing to mention that is he's using a tension and resolve device called Enclosure. And he does it over the, the third. So, so he does it over the, the third, above and below, and then the actual note itself. That's how Enclosure works. And then he does it again, above and below, and the note itself of the tonic, of the C. So. And um, I, I remember kind of seeing this for the first time with Martin Taylor doing this really cool, I think it was Martin Taylor, he did this really cool lick. And where he went all the way up, a C or whatever it was, it was probably a, like some kind of major chord. And he just did enclosure for each chord tone. And it was just really cool. He did it like hyper speed and, you know, I jumped out of my seat. Um, but, you know, this, this is a really cool device where you don't have to think like, oh, I've got to use the altered scale here because it's an altered score, altered chord. We're just using some um, tension and resolve, some chromatic tension and resolve. So if you're new into jazz and, you know, you're a little bit scared about some of these modal scales because the altered scale is the seventh mode of the melodic minor, otherwise otherwise known as the superlocrian. If you're, if you're a little bit worried about using that stuff, this is a cool device to be able to get started and get going and sounding um, like jazz um, with that kind of dissonance into consonants. So that's something you can use there. One, two, three. <laughs> So he starts off with this, um, now you could see at that as a natural minor, you could see that as the um, the F natural minor, or you could see it as the B flat mixolydian um, there, or I mean I, I kind of thought it was really clever because it kind of fully described a 5-1 into F. I thought that that was really cool and it could be that he's doing that or it could be just that you know it's f natural minor and he thought it sounded cool and he just put it over the top of it who knows um without asking him um but you know it shows you that you can use this f device over the f minor device over the top of the b flat seven there um and i thought it's it's you know it's a sequential line as well which is cool that's another thing we can get into our solos the sequential line so <laughs> get that kind of idea into your solo. Se sequential lines are a nice kind of compositional device and um, they drive the, um, the progression forwards, they drive the intensity forwards, and they also create, as I showed you, a bit of um, dissonance to consonance as well. And then he outlines the, the chord really, really well by going from the ninth chromatically up to the major third. And then we're into the next bit, which is the D flat. And this is such a super cool line. Now he goes down the D flat mixolydian scale. Down the D, uh, D flat mixolydian scale. Similar kind of thing to earlier. Um, a similar kind of rhythmic device. And enclosure onto the C, which is the next chord, the C7. So he's describing the next chord, which is really cool. So he's doing what we call making the changes. Um, and that's something that you might want to put into your your solos as well, making sure that you're making the changes. And then we're into the next, um, the next chorus. Things you can take away. So here's your takeaways. Number one, try call and response in your solos um, and try accompanying yourself with the chords. So you've got call and response, a question or an antecedent, sometimes it's called, and then a response. And Kenny does that response with 
a chord or you could see his response actually is the next phrase but whichever way he is doing a call and then a response now what that does is it breaks up your lines and makes sure that you're not going too kind of crazy and filling all the space as the famous adage is sometimes it's about the um, the notes you don't play as well as the notes that you do play um, so you, know, you can take inspiration from Mars Davis on that one he used to leave loads of um, space in between his notes um, and I think this is such a great crafting that Kenny's done on this um, so that's really good for your soloing and also for your writing as well number two um, the blues and pentatonic scales make sure that you are aware, aware of those in the various different positions along the fretboard um, make sure you can do it laterally as well as vertically um, so that you can have you know full creative freedom with your lines um, and then number three use the natural minor scale and enclosure over the top of that two five that minor two five one into F minor um, so use the natural minor over the top of the G minor seven flat five and then use enclosure to create some dissonance and consonance and that key outside kind of sound over the dominant chord going into your F minor. Um, and then over the top of the B flat at seven and the D flat seven, we can use the mixolydian scales, uh, B flat seven and D flat seven, uh, sorry, B flat and D flat mixolydian respectively. So there's some takeaways for you. Um, what I would suggest you do is get the back in track, which is up on the Patreon channel, um, or I'm sure you can find one on YouTube somewhere, and have a play along using some of these devices of how I think that Kenny approached this particular chorus. Um, next week we're going to look at chorus two, which is also super cool and it's got some great things that we can take away from it again. Um, if you want to support this channel, then uh, Patreon is the place to go. If you want to support me in making more videos, that is www.patreon.com forward slash X to guitar lessons. And I would love it if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe um, if you like it and ask me any questions you like in the comments. Um, I think that's it. Thanks for listening and have a good week playing. See ya.